Madam Deputy President, two weeks ago I was travelling in Armenia with a parliamentary delegation at the invitation of the Armenian National Committee of Australia. What I saw there will stay with me forever. Armenia is a peaceful country, but the borders of its neighbouring ethnic Armenian Republic of Artsakh have been under constant attack for some years, and I saw the dreadful outcome of this constant tension as the Azerbaijanis rolled into Artsakh and its people fled. Its people are still fleeing, too scared to remain in their own homes. At least 100,000 ethnic Armenians have arrived in the border town of Goris. By way of scale, that's more than five times the total population of Goris, and the exodus has not stopped. I met grandmothers who had escaped with a small bag, nothing else of their former life, who hadn't eaten for days and didn't know if their sons or grandsons were alive. I met a woman whose husband and son were dead and who had fled her lifelong home in fear for her life. Car after car rolling in, with washing machines, carpets, teddy bears and children's bikes strapped to their roofs. But not all cars could finish the journey. We saw a huge number broken down, petrol so scarce because of the blockade that those fleeing were resorting to using methylated spirits in their cars. They knew it would destroy the engine, they just hoped it would get them across the border. I heard of one car with petrol, which towed four other cars to safety. And then there were the children, not just hungry, but also often very ill, because there has been no medicine allowed into Artsakh for quite some time, and no heating oil for the winter. So children are arriving with pneumonia, high fevers, and other diseases. I heard of at least one woman who gave birth in the car on her way into safety in Armenia. And this was not a story about a woman giving birth caught short with her husband on the way to hospital. She gave birth in the car surrounded by her entire surviving family, all of their worldly possessions, the car unable to stop because to give her the peace to labour because there was no peace and they needed to keep moving. And why are these people fleeing? Eyewitness reports and social media videos make it clear that those who remain, particularly the old men and boys, are being tortured before they are killed. And this torture is being filmed and it is being shared on social media as if it is something of which to be proud and that should be bragged about. And the women I spoke to were terrified of what may happen to them if they remained. Of course, sadly, this is not new. We have seen this before and we are seeing some of it at the moment in other places. And we've recognised it for what it is. Violence and terror directed towards a people simply because of who they are, not because of anything that they have done. And the world has said never again. But here we are, again. We all know that this situation should never have been allowed to occur, Certainly, Artsakh is disputed territory. Azerbaijan claims it, as do or rather did the local ethnic Armenians who had established a democratic republic there, separate from Azerbaijan and bordering Armenia. There will always be territorial disputes, and I make no claims as to the rights or wrongs of this particular dispute. However, just as we are now seeing in Israel, no amount of historical pain can justify or excuse actions which result in a terrified people's displacement. That simple word, displacement, covers so much pain. It is people losing their homes, their communities, their jobs, their sense of place in the world, their security. As one man said to me in Goris, I have left the graves of my ancestors. It is more than the emptying of territory, it is the destruction of lives. Driving into Yerevan, the Armenian capital, you are greeted by a wonderful display of flags waving brightly on a hillside. It lifts your heart after a long trip until you realise that each of the hundreds if not thousands of flags flutters over the grave of a soldier who has died in the recent conflicts. Madam Deputy President, let there be no more flags.